We use real-time forecasting almost everywhere in, in Uber. So for example, another very extreme example is monitoring our own infrastructure, where we have to uh, detect unusual spikes or you know, lack of activity when the system is running. And so if you normally just set you know, flat thresholds to detect the peaks, and to, to, I mean to detect problems, what happens is they're not, they not very sensitive and the load is variable and we have too many false alerts and missed alerts. And so we try to predict the load and we can adjust the thresholds automatically. And so we use machine learning to figure out how to place the thresholds so that we don't get surprised and we, don't, you know, we can sleep better at night. We don't get... So that's another example. And we use machine learning... So, so by the way, what is traditional machine learning? Let me just kind of quickly recap. Well, you have a learner, which is a program that you wrote. You provided historic data called training data and you create a, a machine program called a model and then you execute this on yeah, live data and you try to predict. And usually how do you use these predictions is you, your decision making is done based on um, either a manual query or you have some automatic programs that run and figure this out. Now, machine learning with feedback, with real-time feedback, is a whole different thing. And so I'll give you an example of this Carnegie Mellon, Mellon snake robot that they built. It crawls like a snake, but their challenge was, can it learn new movements? And the experiments they performed were, can it, for example, crawl over an obstacle 10 times its height, or crawl on a tree branch, or crawl, crawl up a sand dune? And even after many trials, this experiment wasn't successful. But when they started feeding back successful trial data from very low, you know, with much easier barriers, the robot learned very quickly on its own. So I'll give you an example of what's going on. So this is a, a sidewinder snake, and it's climbing up a sand dune. The sand dune is at a 30% incline, and most snakes cannot climb that. And what this sidewinder snake does is that it goes sideways, and it's a learned movement. Right? It's, not, it's not usual for any snakes. So they tried this with a snake robot. They, of course, wrapped it up with enough uh, uh, you know, cloth so that it doesn't get jammed, so that the, the mechanics don't get jammed. And you can see it tries and tries, and it fails. And this is on a 10% incline. So when they started giving it, put it on a 5% incline and made it successful, and you can see this is on a 5% incline, it kind of learned to do that clumsily. Right? Not very clever. But then, after some trials, they put it on a 20% grade, and when it learned that, you can see now that the movement is almost exactly like the snake's movement. It learned this on its own. It wasn't programmed. So what, what you know, machine learning with feedback is, here's the traditional machine learning model, but you take the outcomes, and you look at what actions you did, and the successful ones you feedback. So this is a very, very important technique that we're using in Uber. And we're using this across the board. It's become part of our core infrastructure. So we're talking about like trips, drivers, eat, you know. We are building our own maps. And the maps, routes, ETA, are, is, you know, th these things also use machine learning. But the other place where machine learning is very, becoming very popular is in uh, self-driving cars.